Now the sons of Ishkar were Tola and Pua and Joshub and Shiram. Four, the sons of Tola, Uzi and Raphaphiah and Jeriel and Jemiah and Jibsum and some. Oh, oh, hey, elementary, elementary students of Wade. It's Mr. B and uh, Chapel time. I was just doing some light reading. You know, out of First Chronicles. You know those uh, parts of the Bible that are. You know, you just read endless names of somebody begat, somebody begat, somebody begat, somebody. You know, I'm sure you've probably read across those things and uh, those sections. And um, I bet it was boring. Well, hey, God's Word is not boring. Nothing in God's Word is boring. And today I want to share with you why I think these sections of Scripture, especially when you're dealing with names of people that are hard to pronounce, you know, it's kind of, we make up some interesting pronunciations of how these names are supposed to be made. But we've got to remember that everything in God's Word, everything in there is written for our benefit. So I bet you've read across those things and you've got bored. I bet some of you, even if you're trying to read your Bible, you know, you either went through it really fast or you might have even skipped over it completely. You know, I don't know if that's you. I know I've done that before. I want to skip over to get to the good parts. But you know, God's got something in every word in here for us. So today I want to share with you really quickly something that God taught me about these parts of the Bible that people would call boring. Especially when you're going through people's names. People names we don't know. We don't know these people. We don't know what they did. You know, once in a while a name will, will stand out and we'll say, oh, I remember another story about that person. But many of these names that we read in the book of Chronicles and throughout the Old Testament, we don't know who these people are. We know nothing about these people. We don't know how they grew up. We don't know what jobs they had. We don't know what they went through in their life, what they experienced. We don't know how long they lived. We really know nothing about them other than we see their name written down in God's Word. Well, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and let me tell you something about God's Word, something you probably already know. So let me go ahead and turn there. Let me put these glasses on so I can read. So we'll go back to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm going to read verses 16 and 17. You've probably heard these before. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All Scripture... Now, that's talking all Scripture. That's talking about this entire book, God's Word. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Profitable means it does you good. It's good for you. It's got something for you. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God or woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So everything in God's word is good for us. God's got something for us in everything, even these sections. So let's go back to Chronicles and these names. I mean, goodness gracious, Joshua and Rephaphiah. And Jer you know, I, I don't know who these people are. I don't know anything about them, but I know someone who does know, and that someone is God. God knows each and every one of these people. God knows all about these people. You know, the Bible says the hairs on the head, the heads are numbered, which for me, um, okay, not that many, but for some of you, you got a lot of hair. But God knows these people. He knows these names. And what I want to tell you today, very simply, is God knows you too. Sometimes we think that we're like insignificant, that we don't matter. Sometimes we think that we're little or small, that, you know, that no one listens to us, no one cares about us. Don't think that. That's the devil lying to you. God knows you. As a matter of fact, God knew you before you were even born, before you were formed in your mom's belly. God knew you, and he had a plan for you, and he still has a plan for you. Go to Jeremiah chapter 29, one of my very favorite verses. So we turn back to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. You've heard me quote it in chapel before. As a matter of fact, we're going to put it on next year's school handbook on the front page. 
so that we can focus on this so we'll understand what God has for us. So Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you, you, an expected end. So God is thinking of you. God knows you. He knows your name. He knows your needs. He knows your fears. He knows your desires. He knows everything about you. And he has a plan for you, a perfect plan. You know, it's a plan better than anything you could think of. Better than anything I could think of for you. God's got that plan and he's, he's waiting. He's waiting to go ahead and do that plan for you. So he knows you and he loves you. One of our favorite songs that we sing in chapel is Jesus Loves Me. Very old song, very simple song, very truthful song. It says, Jesus loves me, this I know. You should know that Jesus loves you. You might think no one loves you, but Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Kids, that's why it's so important that you need to know your Bible, because this is truth. And it says, the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. You belong to Jesus. You belong to God. You're his. They are weak, but he is strong. Did you know that no matter how strong we think we are, we're really weak? God is the strong one. God is our strength. And that song is so simple, and we sing it from the time we're three, four years old. It's usually one of the first songs we learn as we're children. That song is so truthful, though. It's so important to understand that God knows you, and he loves you always. So those names, all those names I was reading, and there are hundreds of names back there to read, and you've probably read some of them. You know what? The interesting thing about those names is those names are eternal. Did you know that those names are written in God's word? Did you know that God's word is never going to go away? Never, ever going to go away? Matthew chapter 25 Verse 34 says, heaven and earth shall pass away. I mean, this earth that we're on is going to pass away. Heaven's going to pass away, but my words shall not pass away. That's God saying his word. The word of God will not pass away. So these names that we read, they're forever. They're eternal. They're, going to, they're written down forever in God's word, never to go away. Well, let me tell you some good news your name can be the same way. Your name can be written down forever. And it's in a book. And that book is called The Lamb's Book of Life. Now, my name is written in The Lamb's Book of Life because many years ago, I trusted Jesus as my Savior. I asked him to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. And he did. So when that happened, my name was written in The Lamb's Book of Life. Not because of anything I did. I'm no good. Not because of anything I said, but because of what Jesus Christ did when he died on the cross for my sins. And the moment I accepted him as my Savior, my name was written down in that book. And it's never going to be taken away. It can't be blotted out, just like the name of these folks here. My name is always going to be written down. And that's important. Because let me take you to the end of the Bible, to the last part of the Bible. And it's a part that's kind of scary for some people. But it doesn't have to be scary for you, and it doesn't have to be scary for me. Especially if our names are written down. Because you know, God is God, and God is going to judge. And one day, God's going to come and make this all right. And it's important when that day comes that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So turn to Revelation, if you have your Bible, chapter 20. So we're going to go all the way back to the back. And I'm going to read some verses in Revelation chapter 20. And I don't want you to be scared. I don't want to read them to make you scared. But I want to read them to you so you'll know how important it is that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm going to start in verse 11. So in Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11 says, And I saw a great white throne, 
and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. That's talking about God. That's talking about God on his throne and judgment. Verse 12, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books which were written, those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to his works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You don't want your name to be left out of that book. You don't want to be one of those dead, one of those people that were brought up and judged and God opens up the book and he opens up the book of life and, and looks in it and your name's not written in it. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, if you haven't cried out to him and asked him to save you and be your Lord and savior, let me beg you to do that. That's something that you need to take care of today. If you don't understand, you can always call me. You can ask your mom, your dad, your Sunday school teacher. But you can just ask Jesus Christ to save you. Come into your heart, forgive your sins. And your name too will be written down forever, just like all these names back in Chronicles. But even better, name written eternally in the Lamb's Book of Life. I love you, I miss you, and I can't wait till we get back together again. Till next time, this is Mr. B. Love you. Bye.